Economic models can be used to understand the implications a policy proposal might have on an economy. The first part of the question is, suppose that the Australian economy is at equilibrium, use the aggregate demand aggregate supply model to graph Australia at the long run equilibrium. So we'll start with drawing our y axis, which is the price, our x axis, which is output, and then we'll draw our upward slope short run aggregate supply curve, and then our downward aggregate demand curve, and then we'll draw our long run aggregate supply curve. We see that all these three curves intersect at the same point, which we labeled as point A, which will give us our potential output, which we call it full employment output, and price 1. Therefore, we know that our economy is at its potential output, its full employment output, because we reach Y star, because the three curves intersect at the same point. Then, the second part of the question. Suppose a decline in new wealth in Asia reduces foreign financing of new housing construction in Australia. Use aggregate demand aggregate supply analysis to determine what impact this will have on the Australian economy in the short run. What happened to output, the price level, nominal wage, real wage, and the real interest rate? So this is an example of a negative aggregate demand shock, which means we have a lower investment. Consequently, it would result in a lower aggregate demand. So I know that aggregate demand will shift to the left. We will have a new point of intersection between the new aggregate demand, aggregate demand 2, and aggregate supply curve, which is point B. At this point, we will have a new output level, which is Y2, and a new price level, which is B2. So we see that our output level dropped and our price level dropped. Consequently, Y2 is lower than our Y star, which is potential output or full employment output. So this means that we produce less than our potential. Consequently, our unemployment rate will be higher than natural rate of unemployment. So anytime unemployment rate increases, people will be willing to work at a lower wage. Consequently, nominal wage, which is the big W, will be lower. What about real wage? Real wage is nominal wage divided by the price. We mentioned here that the price will be lower. So I know that the price here will be lower. Therefore, the whole ratio will be higher. So I know that real wage, which is little w, will be higher. One of you might ask, why would you change w here? Because we said nominal wage will be lower. When we talk about real wage in the short term, people work on a contract and you cannot change the contract which means the nominal wage in the short run for everyone who works with a contract, it cannot be updated, but it will be updated after the contract expires. But for any person who doesn't have a contract, they will get a new lower nominal wage. Consequently, because of lower output, it means that lower income. Consequently, our demand for money will be lower, which means it will shift to the left. Why? Because of transaction motive. People will have less income, consequently they will is bent less, therefore the demand for money will be lower, which would result in a lower interest rate because we shifted the demand for money to the left. And because we have a lower price, so if I look at the real money supply, here we have lower price, consequently the whole ratio will be higher, which means money supply will shift to the right. The third part of the question. Describe what happens in the economy in economic terms as it transitions from the initial equilibrium, which is point A, to the short run equilibrium, which is point B. So in the short run, we know that we have a negative aggregate demand shock, which means aggregate demand will be lower, which means it will shift to the left. Consequently, the IS curve will shift to the left, which would result in a lower output and lower interest rate. But this is not enough to return to the original output because we are producing at a level below our potential output. So this means that we have excess output because our aggregate demand 2 is lower than our aggregate supply. This is mainly due to the aggregate demand shock. Consequently, it would result in a lower price because we have surplus. And we have a higher demand for output. Why? Because money supply increases, because price went down, this would result in a lower interest rate. And we know that the supply of output will be lower. Why? Because now we have a higher real wage. Consequently, firms will be reluctant to produce more. The next part of the question is, why is the short-run equilibrium not a long-run equilibrium? Because we know that Y2 is lower than our full employment output, our potential output. Therefore, the labor market is not in equilibrium because our unemployment rate is higher than natural rate of unemployment. And our price level is below than B1, which is our original equilibrium price. 
As a consequence, wages are not properly set. They are not at equilibrium. The next part of the question. In the absence of any intervention, capture what happens to the economy in the long run on your graph. So, if we don't do anything by the government, we know that our output Y2 is below than potential output, which is Y star. Consequently, our unemployment is bigger than natural rate of unemployment, which would result in a lower nominal wage. If we have lower nominal wage, this means that producers will have the incentive to increase their production. Therefore, our aggregate supply will shift to the right. So, when aggregate supply will shift to the right, I know that the three curves will intersect at the same point, which is aggregate supply in the long run, which is aggregate supply 2, and aggregate demand 2, and long run aggregate supply. Therefore, I will look at the point of intersection between the long run aggregate supply, aggregate demand 2, so I know that aggregate supply will shift to point C, and we will call it aggregate supply in the long run. So now, the three curves intersect at the same point, which will give us our potential output, Y star, and the price level will be lower, which is price in the long run. Therefore, the price in the long run will be lower than B2, which will be lower than B1. The next part of the question is, describe what happens in the economy in economic terms as it transitions from the short-run equilibrium to the long-run equilibrium. So, when we move from the short-run to the long-run, we know that Y2 is lower than Y star, which is our potential output. Consequently, unemployment rate is bigger than natural rate of unemployment, which means we have excess unemployment. This would result in a lower nominal wage. Because of lower nominal wage, companies will have the incentive to produce more. Therefore, aggregate supply will shift to the right. Until we reach our unemployment equals natural rate of unemployment, and our new output level is equivalent to our potential output. But we'll see, we'll see that our price level in the long run will be lower than P2, which is lower than B1. Also, we can justify it as Moving from the short run to the long run, I know that our price level P2 is lower than P1 and our unemployment is bigger than natural rate of unemployment. So this means that our expectations will be updating, which means our wages and the prices will adjust until we reach our new price in the long run will be equal to the expected price in the long run and our output in the long run will be equivalent to our potential output. The next part is, suppose the RBA intervenes with monetary policy. What type of policy should they implement? Capture what happens to the economy in the long run on your graph. Describe what happens in the economy in economic terms as it transitions from the short-run equilibrium to the policy-induced equilibrium. So here we get to the same graph of this equilibrium where aggregate demand shifted to the left. So if we use monetary policy, what we'll do is we will increase money supply through open market operation, which we call it open market purchase which means central bank will purchase treasury bonds. So when they purchase treasury bonds, they will inject money into the economy, which will result in a higher money supply. Consequently, because of higher money supply, this would result in a lower interest rate. A lower interest rate would result in a higher investment, which we call it adverse crowding out. And because of higher investment would result in a higher aggregate demand, which would result in Aggregate demand will shift back to its original level, from aggregate demand to, to our original aggregate demand, which means we will return back to our original output, which is potential output, therefore Y3 will be equal to Y3, and our price level will increase to our original price level, which is price 1, therefore P3 will be equal to P1.